Are you one of those folks that puts your corkscrew away in the middle of summer because you're not drinking quite as much red wine as you used to in the winter time? Well, we're going to have you drinking red wine all year long. Also, a little home blending experiment. And we're going to be sipping a little bit of local epic wine country wine. All that on this episode of The Average Wine Enthusiast. Hi there, everybody. My name is Mike LaPlante, and I'm the average wine enthusiast. Are you one of those folks that when the summertime comes, you tend to drink less red wine? You tend to be using your corkscrew a little bit less, and then you end up drinking beer or cocktails or coolers or some other kind of cold, refreshing drink. You really love red wine. But oftentimes, the experience that you have drinking red wine in the summertime is unpleasant. That's because the wine is not at the proper temperature. What happens when you drink red wine when it's too warm? When I say warm, it's just a higher temperature than it should be. Well, the tannins and the acid are accentuated. They're excited and that isn't very pleasant on your palate. It isn't pleasant on your throat and it isn't pleasant in your chest. In fact, a lot of people will judge red wine solely on the experience that they have drinking it in the summertime, and then they'll shy away from it after that. It gives them heartburn or it gives them a too warm or an unpleasant feeling in their chest, and that's no good. There is an optimal temperature to be drinking red wine at. Uh, oftentimes, especially with European wines, uh, the winemaker will put a, uh, optimal serving temperature right on there. Sometimes it's in a range, sometimes it's a very specific temperature that they think is going to be the right temperature to be drinking that wine at. Uh, if, even if a red wine is too cold, also you're, you're cheating yourself. It's not unpleasant to drink, but uh, you know, you're missing out on a, a lot of the body, the tannins, uh, maybe even some of the acidity is tamped down a little bit, and uh, the fruit forwardness, you don't taste the flavors quite as much. That's true with a lot of food. You, when you're eating it, it's too cold and you're not really getting all the flavors. So th there is definitely a optimal temperature for drinking red wine. There's optimal temperatures for drinking white wine too and rosé and on and on it goes. But uh, right now we're just talking about red wine and how come a lot of folks don't drink it in the summertime. So what do you do? You say, well, that's easy. Then I'll just keep my red wine in the fridge. Well, like I say, uh, if red wine is too chilly, then uh, you're not going to be enjoying the red wine the same way you would if it was at its optimal temperature. Sticking a bottle of wine in the fridge when you're drinking alcohol uh, tends to be a bad idea because then you end up forgetting that it's there, it gets too cold, and it's just a bad scene. What I have, uh, what I propose for you folks to do to keep drinking red wine all through the year um, requires you to keep the wine at that optimal temperature. Now that may sound like a lot of work, but we're talking about wine now. It, it's, it's, it's a fun thing and you should enjoy the experience of uh, you know, having your bottle of wine out on the table and keeping it cold and, and uh, having it close at hand and closely monitoring the temperature because then you'll enjoy that red wine just every bit as much as you would if it was you know, the middle of October in Canada. Because <laughs> I know in October in Northern California, it can get pretty hot. Okay, so it's the middle of summer, something like it is today. It's a very warm day out there. And uh, you have all the windows open. It's relatively warm in your home. Which reminds me, I wanted to mention the fact that even in the wintertime, a lot of folks keep their thermostat at somewhere between 75 and 80 degrees. So if you keep your bottle of wine in the kitchen, for any period of time that means that wine is also going to be that temperature and you may want to employ this method of drinking your red wine even in the winter time what i do typically is just throw my bottle of wine outside the patio door here and it's in plain view and it's close by and and uh, that's my little way of keeping my wine at the optimal temperature so like i said if 
it may seem like a lot of work, but you're, what you're doing is dealing with wine. So you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a towel. You're going to need uh, a decanter. You're going to need a corkscrew because you got to get the wine out of the bottle. Uh, and you're going to need a funnel and an ice bucket and some ice and some water. So first things first, you open your bottle of wine and you decant it like you normally would and you let it sit out there for an hour or two depending on the age and the varietal of the wine itself and then what you're going to do is take your funnel and you're going to end up putting the uh, wine back into the bottle now what i do sometimes when i'm decanting i'll leave a little bit of wine at the bottom of the bottle so that you know if you had the bottle decanted uh, for uh, two hours, let's say, you don't end up with, you know, um, a dry, a dried out wine at the bottom of your bottle. You'll you just leave maybe an ounce or two at the bottom there. So you, what you're going to do is take your funnel, put it in the top of the bottle, and then pour the wine back into the bottle. Crazy stuff, I know. Now what you're going to do is take your ice bucket, and what I'd like to do is just take one tray of ice, if you don't have trays of ice, it comes out of your fridge door, maybe about 20 ice cubes or so. And you're gonna put that in your ice bucket. And then you're gonna take some water, cold water preferably, and you're going to uh, pour that in the ice bucket as well. What we're trying to do is create an environment for this wine, not to get freezing cold. We just want it to chill up a little bit. So, and we're gonna be using this water depending on how fast you're drinking your wine, depending on how many other people are enjoying the, the bottle of wine that we're uh, pre preparing here. Uh, if, you're, if it's going low and slow, it's just you and uh, your significant other, then uh, this is perfect for taking the bottle out, putting it back in if it's getting a little too warm again. So you have your um, ice bucket full of ice and water. Now you put your warm bottle of re-decanted wine into the ice bucket. And you're going to let it sit there for anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. And then it'll get up to the uh, optimal temperature. Now, if you've been drinking red wine for any amount of time, you'll know if it's, you know, if it's giving you that warm feeling in your chest, you need to chill it a little bit more depending on, you know, like I say, the varietal or the vintage. You should know when, what the optimal temperature is. And once it gets to that optimal temperature, you don't want to leave it in the ice bucket anymore and that's where the towel comes in and it also comes in handy also when you just pull the bottle out of the bucket you're going to pull the bottle out and dry the bottom off put the towel down on the table and just set the bottle there and let it uh, chill and when i say chill i don't mean in, uh, decrease in temperature i mean you're just going to let it sit there uh, until you're ready to pour some more wine now that it has reached that optimal temperature and then if you have maybe another bottle of wine that you're decanting while you're enjoying that wine, if you have more folks that you're enjoying wine with, you can uh, you know just keep that process going and uh, keep popping your bottles of wine in your ice bucket. And that's a fun way, you know, you have your wine on the table, you have an ice bucket there, which is always, you know, another piece of equipment, something nice that you can have around and, uh, and adds to the ambience of drinking your bottle of wine. Uh, so yes, please keep drinking red wine all summer long because it's, uh, it's the right thing to do. So another experience I would like to share with you is uh, I recently opened a bottle of Petite Syrah. It is a varietal that is derived from the Syrah grape. Uh, it's spelled differently though. And uh, it came out of France in the late 1800s, I believe. So it's not one of those grapes that's been around for centuries and centuries. And it was used, it still is used, mostly as a blending grape. So when the folks up there in Russian River uh, in Cal Northern California started bottling their own Petite Syrah on its own, I, we had stopped in there and it, it was very delicious. So I decided to open that bottle up just recently and it was amazing. It blew me away. So of course what I did is I searched out some more Petite Syrah, which is not all that easy to do, especially when you're just dealing with the LCBO as we do here in the province of Ontario. 
but I did happen to find a bottle of Granite Hill Cellars out of Lodi, California. Definitely not the Russian River area, but Lodi does produce some decent wines. Uh, they're particularly good with some varietals, and this Petit Syrah was somewhat of a surprise. Definitely nothing like the Russian River uh, Petit Syrah that I had tried earlier. The intensity of the flavors and the body in this was it was too much almost. I drank a glass of it and it was just like, wow, you can really tell that this, it's like drinking concentrated, really good wine. So I can see why they use Petit Syrah as a blending grape. It has, you know, super fruit forward uh, cherries and lots of vanilla and it has that really extracted flavor in it. Lots of body and uh, lots of the just the right amount of acid as well so I, after one glass of this i i put it i put the vacuum in on it i said i don't know what if i enjoy it or not because it was just something so different so intense it encompassed everything that i'd like in a red uh bottle of wine but it was just it seemed like too much so the following night uh, we ended up opening up this bottle of uh, Sterling Cabernet Sauvignon 2015. And I believe this is also a uh, California wine. Yes, it is uh, California Cabernet Sauvignon. It's one of those bottles of wine that uh, when it goes on sale, we buy a few of it. And we call these cellar savers. So you're not really diving into your really good bottles of wine. You uh, This would probably be like the second bottle of wine that you would open after you had your really good bottle of wine for dinner or whatever you'd open up something like this it's something that you enjoy drinking and it was on sale when you bought it so you bought a bunch more so you can save the bottles the really good bottles in your cellar so that's what we ended up doing with the sterling so and it's like i say it's somewhat meh and we didn't drink the whole bottle in fact we just barely drank maybe a third of it so the next night comes around still have the uh the uh Petit Syrah all vacuum vined up. And uh, so I thought to myself, how much better can I make this Cabernet Sauvignon by adding Petit Syrah? Who do I think I am? Some kind of wine blender? Apparently I am because that's what I did. Uh, the first whack at it, I poured about a half a glass of like maybe four ounces of the Cabernet Sauvignon and about two ounces of the Petit Syrah and it it was amazing it was really delicious glass of wine made this something else that it was never before so it really added to the the sterling you can also look at it the other way and say that the Petit Syrah was diluted by this Cabernet Sauvignon but I wouldn't go that far and then the next glass I had I did half and half and uh, enjoyed that quite a bit and so that's what's in here right now is the blended Cabernet Sauvignon with some Petit Syrah. So if, if you ever see some Petit Syrah uh, on your wine shelf and it's at a decent price, pick it up and uh, give it a try and let me know what you think of it in the comments down below because uh, my experience with it, in the, especially with this particular bottle, was something like I've never had before. It's seriously like concentrated uh goodness in a bottle but it's too it's too concentrated so i couldn't handle uh, all the goodness that was coming out of it just on its own okay before we go i thought i would uh, have a little sip of some local wine uh my wife won this bottle at work they had a raffle or something and she ended up bringing this bottle of cooper's hawk charvivio uh, and uh, we threw it in the fridge, and I'm not exactly what Charvivio is. I assume it's some Chardonnay. It is. It's Chardonnay, some Vidal, and some Vionnet. So, Vivio, okay, sure. Charvivio from Cooper's Hawk. Uh, I'm only familiar with their Talon um, wines, which they have a white Talon and a red Talon. And the red Talon is drinkable. Let's just put it that way. Um, this is a 2013, which, wow, it's, it's almost seven years old. So uh, I thought I would give this a little try and let you know what's going on here in the uh, local wine scene, Cooper's Hawk 2013. 
Charvivio. Hmm. Uh, lots of earthiness there. Uh, citrusy. That's about it. Let's give it a taste. A little bit of grapefruit, some more leafy tarragon or thyme, maybe. Uh, definitely earthy flavor on that. Very crisp. It, it probably is really good when it's even colder, I'm thinking. It's been sitting here for maybe, uh, I don't know, as long as I've been shooting the show here, about half an hour or so. Um, so it's... I think it'd be a little bit better um, with some more coldness on there because uh, the acid is, it's apparent. It's not horrible. Uh, uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, maybe a seven-year-old wine, maybe this wasn't supposed to be around for seven years. I'm not sure. The Chardonnay that's in here, I would have to think it is not oat Chardonnay because uh, I don't I don't taste any oak in that, but uh, there you have it. Some Charvivio. I'll even let you know how to pronounce it as well. From Cooper's Hawk. So if you're in the area or you're in Ontario, because that's probably the only place you're going to be able to find it, is in an LCBO. Um, there it is. Uh, if, you, if you drink a newer vintage, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Uh, I guess that's going to do it for this episode of the show. Thanks a lot for watching. If you know anybody who's digging wine just as much as you are because you're watching a wine video right now on YouTube. If you know someone who's somewhat like you in terms of wine uh, knowledge, you want to know a little bit more about wine um, and uh, you think they would dig the show, let them know about it. Share the heck out of this show. Let people know uh, that it exists and uh, I would appreciate it very much. Also, a big thank you to the Big Organ Trio for letting me use their music on this show. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them down below, and please, if you're not already, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Until next time, my name is Mike LaPlante, and I'm the Average Wine Enthusiast. Salute! <laughs>